Hi, I'm Kent. In a previous video, I showed how I do slip casting. The idea is you take liquid clay slip and pour it into a plaster mold. The plaster pulls some of the water out of the slip and forms the clay pot on the edge of the plaster. You pour out the excess slip, you let the clay dry a little bit, and then you can release it. I made my own molds, and when I was starting out, I found this really complicated. I'm by no means an expert, but you wind up with molds of molds of molds. It's mold inception. So what I want to do with this video is talk through this process. I've created some simple graphics to illustrate the process. I'm going to walk through that, and I'm going to show you some of the molds I've made and how that works in the real world. Then finally, I'm going to show some of the pots that I designed in 3D and use my 3D printer to help make the molds. So what we want to do is end up with molds like this. So I've basically drawn this on the screen. There is a lip around the edge that corresponds to the slip here where there's some extra room for the slip. And inside is the shape of the pot. Here I've shown the same thing. There's the plaster in white around the edge, just the lip at the top, and then the shape of the pot on the inside. So just a quick recap, what we do is we pour liquid clay slip into the pot. We let that sit for a while and the level goes down as the water is absorbed into the plaster itself. We then pour out the excess slip. So we're left with the very wet clay along the inside of the plaster. We can then trim the excess off the top so it gives us a nice top lip. And once it's dry, we can pull it out of the plaster itself. But how do we create this? That's exactly what I want to talk about in this video. So there's a few different ways to make these plaster molds. One of the simplest is to start with an existing pot. So say I had this pot here and I want to make a copy of it. What I can do is actually make a plaster mold of the original pot. So we have the original pot. What we want to do is turn it upside down and build some sort of box or container around it. This is going to hold the plaster. This can be done with wood or, or uh, plastic. There's several different things. There are many videos on YouTube that actually show this process. You then fill it with plaster, let it cure. You can take away the box, turn it back right side up and remove the original pot. And now we're left with a negative of the pot. We can fill this with clay and do exactly what I showed before. We can do a slightly fancier version of this. So we start with the same original pot, turn it upside down. And now we put space for the lip around the bottom. So we have that headroom for the excess slip. This could be any material. It could be a piece of wood um, that you've coated so the plaster doesn't stick. And then we do the same thing. We build the box. We fill it with plaster, remove the box, turn it back over, remove the piece we use for the lip, and finally remove the pot. So instead of being fancier, you can also be lazier. And that's what I did for a couple of my molds. In particular, uh, this one here, I'll show you that. So the idea is we, uh, again, build a box around the outside edge. I actually used one of my uh, plastic tubs, um, so I didn't even build this. And then I suspended the pot I wanted to make a copy with uh, at the top. I then poured the plaster in from the top, let it cure, removed it, the tub, and removed the pot. I'm left with a mold like this. It doesn't have the recess in the top, so the top, very top edge of the pot needs to be trimmed off. These also aren't very straight, so they need to be trimmed for that reason as well. But I've been pretty happy with this as a starting mold. I did something similar with this mold. Uh, I poured it again from the top, but here I do have a little recess that I made. And this was actually another plastic bucket I put on top and pushed the pot down a little bit. So there is a little bit of lip here. So you can do it either from the top or from the bottom. So what about silicon molds? When I showed my slip casting process before, I showed these silicon molds, which I actually used to create my plaster mold. Why would you want to use silicon? Well, there's a few different reasons. So the most common reason is you want to make many, many copies. So you would do this if you wanted to, say, do a production run, you wanted to make 10 at a time or more. You could take the silicone and pour many different plaster molds using that. I don't need to do that many at a time, so that's one not, not one of my motivations. The other reason is the plaster molds do wear out. After you've used them for a while, there's some chemical reactions that happen and the plaster will deteriorate. It'll create little bubbles and pockets, so the texture of the pot that you're creating winds up deteriorating as well. So by having an original silicon mold, you can remake the plaster molds and make them exactly the same over time. That's also nice, but I don't, I'm not tied to any of my pots and my forms. Right now, I'm still exploring. Maybe eventually I want to make an exact copy, but right now that isn't a motivation of mine either. So why do I want to use silicone? Well, it's bendable and very flexible. Having an original pot that's rigid and plaster that's rigid is a bad combo. So when you're removing the pot from the plaster, you don't have to worry about breaking the pot or the plaster. Since it's all bendy, you can actually remove 
the pot from the silicone relatively easily. The other thing is you don't have to worry about getting your pot actually entombed in the plaster. Um, that would be really bad. So I haven't done this process, but you can actually make a silicone mold of a plaster mold. So say you had a plaster mold, you could then create the silicone that goes inside of that. So here's what that process looks like. I have the original plaster mold. I then fill it with silicone. Here the silicone I've drawn green. My actual silicone is this purple shade. So you pour it in and then you can pull it back out and you have your silicone. With the silicone, you can then take it out, put it inside your box, fill it with plaster, take away the box, turn it back over and remove the silicone. And now you have an exact copy of the original. The silicone is the same shape as your original pot. So we can use that instead of the pot itself. So there are some problems with doing it exactly this way. Well, one, that's a lot of silicone. The whole inside of the pot gets filled up with silicone and silicone's expensive. So I'd like to use as little as reasonable. And what if I don't want more than one plaster mold? Since I am just making a few at a time, I actually only need one. So I don't have one to copy. So that's a little bit of a challenge using this approach. So I wondered, can I actually create the silicone mold directly without having a plaster mold first? And the answer was yes. So next I'm gonna walk through the process I used to create these silicone molds that then created this plaster mold. So here, this is our target. We want this plaster mold. And to do that, we want some silicone around the outside edges of it that we could then pour plaster into. So there are two silicone molds, the inside one and the outside one. On the inside one, the outside surface of it is exactly the pot you'll get. So this is the same as that pot. So we want this surface to be very, very good. The rest of the surfaces aren't critical and don't really matter. This is the one that's gonna get copied into the clay. So how do we make these? Let's do them one at a time. So again, we care about this surface the most, the outside of this mold. So what I did was I actually 3D printed a mold for this mold, for the mold, <laughs> molds upon molds upon molds. So this is the, again, the critical surface. So if I take this away, it's actually exactly where the pot is. So we could fill this whole thing with silicone, but as I said, I wanted to use as little as possible. So I actually created two 3D printed parts that I could then pour the silicone inside of. I removed the 3D printed shell and I'll look to the silicone. Now that's just the inside of our plaster mold. We want the outside as well. So we can do the same thing there. I 3D printed two parts that I could then pour silicone into. The two silicone molds let us create the plaster that we need to cast our parts. So that was how this worked in 2D. Let's see how it works in 3D. I'm by no means a 3D modeler, so I'm not gonna show you any of that process right now, but I can show what I ended up with. So here's the pot I created in 3D. Uh, you can see it's relatively simple and straight walled. This is the one I've been slip casting. Uh, on the bottom, there's a simple foot. In the model, I didn't actually make a hollow. This is like pouring the slip in. Uh, the wall would get formed against the, the plaster. So to slip cast this mold, we need the plaster mold. So we could turn that on. Plaster goes around the outside of the pot. I could turn on the section analysis. So the pot sits in. So the outside wall of the pot is the inside wall of the plaster. On the top, there's also this recess for the slip to get poured into. So I'll turn off the pot. Now what we need to do is create the silicone mold. So I modeled that as well. So I'll turn off the section analysis. There is an outside piece that goes around the outside of the mold. And then there is the inside piece that goes around the inside of the mold. So if we had these somehow, we could have a gap between them. That's where the plaster would get poured into. We could then remove the silicone and pour the slip to create our pot. So how do we get the silicone pieces? So as I showed in the 2D world, we can actually 3D print some parts to do this. So let's start with the inside piece. So I'll hide the outside. The most critical uh, element of this is where the pot goes. So the pot actually overlaps with the silicone mold. So the outside of the silicone mold is actually the face of our pot. So we can create a 3D shell that goes around that. And so now the inside face of that shell will be the outside face of the silicone, which will be the inside face of the plaster mold, which will then be the outside face of the pot. So this is what we need to create. One of the things you'll notice is I've extended this up beyond where the plaster actually is. 
I've added some uh, an extra lip here and some holes, and I'll explain those in a second. So here is one shell, and here's the other. So there's a gap between these. So we can print both of those pieces separately. They actually don't connect. And then pour the silicone inside of that. So that's the inside silicone mold. We also have the outside silicone mold that we need to do. So just like before, since this isn't actually used in the slip plastic, it really is just there to give the mold some dimension, the plaster mold some dimension. This can be a little bit more sloppy. So we can turn off the plaster, and then there is then there is an outside shell and an inside shell for this. The silicone can get poured inside. So turn on the section analysis. So there are the two shells. You can pour the silicone mold. What we need to do then is print four pieces. So here are the four pieces. There's the inside of the inside silicone mold, the outside of the inside silicone mold, the inside of the outside silicone mold, and the outside of the inside silicone mold. This is really crazy. This is part of the reason I went through this in 2D is because there's so many moving pieces here um, and that actually gets really complicated. But once we have all this, we print this, we then can pour silicone into both halves. We can then take away the 3D printed parts. We can then pour plaster between the silicone parts. And then we can finally pour the pot. And that leaves us with the final pot. So here is actually one of the original pieces I used to make the silicone. Only one of the pieces actually survived. This, I printed this with a relatively thin shell. So this is the outside of the outside mold. So I put that in. I had a corresponding 3D printed part on the inside. One of the things you'll note is I have all these holes around the top. Is that so I could align the two parts and have them connected? I want the whole inside to be silicone, so I can't have any structure on the inside. I can only attach these to the top, but I also need to be able to pour the silicone in. So I did that for the outside. I did that for the inside. And then one last time I could align the outside and the inside silicone parts and then pour liquid plaster between these two. And once it cured, pull out the silicone and then pull out the plaster mold. So hopefully that was informative. There are molds upon molds upon molds when making slip casting molds. There are a few different ways to do it. Depending on what you want to do, one might be the right thing for you. Very simple molds are copying existing pots. There are a bunch of videos on YouTube of how that works. Again, the challenge is, is it easy enough to remove the original? If you're not worried about that, that's fine. I was interested in pots that I was going to 3D design, so there was no original. So that's when I went down this path of creating the silicone molds. One of the things I want to do is instead of creating the silicone mold, I want to use the 3D printer to create a mold for the plaster. Now, this is a little bit tricky because the 3D printed part will be rigid and the plaster will be rigid. But if I make the 3D printed part thin, it should be easy to remove. Since I can make more 3D printed parts and I actually don't plan on reusing them, it's actually okay if that's a destructive process. So I'm hoping that we'll remove a couple of steps. I could 3D print the mold for the plaster instead of making a mold for the silicone, which is a mold for the plaster, which is a mold for the slip cast part. Hopefully that clears up molds and slip casting. It definitely is mold inception with molds of molds of molds. I hope you found that useful. If you have any questions about any of this, please leave a comment below. Thanks.